loses confidence. Here we go. We're looking for 150 at 800 meters. It's uh, predicted to be incredibly quick. Well, away they go. There's going to be some stragglers if, suffering in the latter stage of this one if they all go with the pace. The two pacemakers, Kivuva and Rotic, have been tasked with going out in 150 for 800, 217 for 1,000, which, Steve, you were saying earlier to me you thought was perhaps a little bit too, uh, too fast. Well, on paper, it doesn't even look right, does it? To go 150, you probably head out first lap a bit quick, settle down second lap. And then they're expecting them to pick up again through to 1,000 metres. They go through in 217. I can't see that happening. And particularly because it's going to be down to Kiprop. Now, he set himself up. I expect him to get out there hard. But I think it's that third lap where they, when he will find out whether he really fancies it. McCluffy just almost stepping on Mo Farah there. And that's where the gaps start to appear. And then Kiprop is maybe challenging the others here tonight, Tim. See, I'm going to go out really hard. And then they're probably thinking he'll come back to us on the third lap. If, if he does, he may be in trouble. If he doesn't, then we're going to see him doing what he does best sometimes, showing us how fast he can go. Well, there's been talk of a world record attempt, and certainly it's being set up for that so far. 53.7 at 400 metres. Kiprop was probably about 54 and a half, maybe high 54s at 400 metres. Just about perfect. It is uh, Kivuva in second place, and Igida isolated there in fourth place of all of them. McCluffy trying to close him down, but look at the single file there, that strip of runners way back along the uh, home straights. They come through with two laps to run. And Igida has good 5,000 meter strength. He's a sub 13 minute 5,000 meter man. McCluffy struggling to go with him now and close that gap. Mo Farah yet to show his colours is back in what eighth place at the moment. Farah, who's broken 3:30 twice in this track. Look at the 800 metre time, 1:49.9. It's quick, but it's what happens now. Look at Gida's closing on Kiprop. Kavuva's looking around. He's tired. He's struggling to keep this going. Kiprop looks relaxed to me, but they will start to close this. Mo Farah, I will tell you, will not stay near its place. And as I say, Mo just starting to move up a little bit. And they're all going to come back to Kiprop here. But he's going to think effort on the third lap for them. I'm having a rest now, a little bit of a rest, and then I go again. But uh, Igida is close, and he's going to have to go hard, and he's going to have to go fast here. Oh, and Kiprop gets in the way, Tim. The world record of El Garouz, 326, set in Rome all of 18 years ago. They come down the straight, and it is Igida who leads by three or four metres from uh, Kiprop. Has he gone too hard over the first 800? Kiprop because he must have been about right 150.2 at 800 meters. McCluffy, the reigning Olympic champion, in third place. Mo Farah in fifth place at the moment and looking strong as they head into the back straight. But Igida, who's a 328 man himself, leading by two or three meters from Kiprop, has somebody to aim at now. Does Kiprop? McCluffy in third, and these three are away. And Farah in sixth place now, still got work to do. The rest of them struggling in this pace. The European champion is back in about eighth place at the moment. Philip Ingebrigtsen as Igida has Kiprop breathing down his neck, coming into the straight now and running really wide now on the outside with Igida on the inside beaten. And it's coming away now with this or win very comfortably indeed, looking fantastic. When boy it was who took the win, my word, leaving it very, very late indeed. And there are bodies strewn all over the track, the winning time 3.30.49. It just shows, Steve, how delicately you've got to uh, pace these races. When you're operating at the edge of the envelope like that, you've got to get it right. And 149.9 or 150.3, whatever it was for Kiprop at 800 metres, was just far, far too optimistic. And he will be disappointed with that, won't he? Because he really did expect to run a long way under 3.30 here tonight. And there have been whisperings in the hotel today of a world record attempt. I think, Tim, <laughs> you know, we were both saying, you know, if you, if you go out at 150, you're setting yourself up either to run a world record or to get into a bit of bother. And when you slow down so much on the third lap, I think that was his plan tonight. Go out hard, maybe suck the others into that, slow down and go again. But they're coming from behind, and Quemo in particular comes from absolutely nowhere. And you know, Kiprop gives up in the end, which I never like to see, to be honest. Um, 
we're here in Monaco. We expect great things. We expect great things from Kiprop. Um, we're not always going to get it, of course. But you know, he said to me yesterday he's had a difficult week. He's had problems with his manager, his agent. Um, back home in Kenya, he said he's been stressed out. But then don't go out 150. You know, exactly. don't take the bait. You know, run a more sensible race. But but you know, he's, he's only got himself to blame. He went out hard, um, for whatever reason, um, it wasn't there for him tonight. Kwemoy comes through with it with a win, which you know, would surprise everybody, including himself, probably. All credit to Kwemoy because he looked uh, fabulous there down the home straight. I mean, it looked almost like a tactical race. The speed he was able to generate over the last 70 or 80 meters. 3.30.49 for Kwemoy, a season's best. Manangoy second, 3.31.19. Mo Farah back in fifth place, by the way, 3.31.74. I think quite a few athletes had the rhythm of their race upset by that pace being much too quick. And Charlie Grice, by the way, another young uh, Briton in that race, 3.33.60. Confirmation there of the top eight in the men's 1,500 meters. So much promised 